Hey there, it's Pete over at The Samplist and today we are checking out Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion from Spitfire Audio. The team at Spitfire Audio have now released their third instalment of the Abbey Road Orchestra. To complete the low and high percussion, we now have metal percussion. And the performances, again, are by Joby Burgess and the engineering is by Simon Road. So all the libraries are very, very cohesive. And of course, metal percussion is incredibly diverse in the range of instruments that it contains. Recorded in Abbey Road Studio One, this library is just full of clarity and detail and a plethora of mic options. In fact, it is possibly the most detailed percussion library that is out there at the moment. There are 16 mic signals and 409 articulations and it does utilize the right left mapping so you can play with two hands and there is a voice choking feature as well. The library downloads at 136 gigabytes and it does cover 151 1905 samples. Currently the library is on sale for £299 or $349 or euros and if you own either the low or high percussion there is a further cross grade discount so log into your account to see if you qualify for that. After the intro period is over the library will be £399 and $449 or euros respectively. In this video we're going to take a look at the instrument and just see the huge range of instruments that this library contains, have a little play around with it, check out the mics and then we are going to put them into a composition and just see yeah, what is it all about and how is it to compose with. So without further ado, let's jump right in. And here we have Spitfire Audio's Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion loaded up in its own Spitfire Audio plugin. And it's worthy of note at this moment that the uh, library is NKS compatible. And that's really important for people like me who love composing everything where possible using all the flashy lights of complete control. However, it's just nice to go through this video with the plugin in its standalone version and it's also resizable which is very very important um, when you're making videos so there we go anyway we have at the top if you have any of the other volumes it's really um, straightforward it's just another addition now um, but we have the metal percussions popped up so you can see uh, the whole collection growing and it's a really really big collection um, but it's going to filter with the metal percussion and the anvils are the first and of course you get your previews beautiful and I have um, for the purpose of the video cranked up the plugin it is quite quiet when you're composing with it but that's absolutely great because you're not going to red light nothing's going to clip um, I compose everything right down at sort of minus 15 in a way uh, so I've got loads of headroom so you just adjust the balance as you need to so I don't feel like you need to do that but I just have for the purpose of the video and here is the anvil with the lump hammer Okay, so I will play these, uh, but you are going to hear the sound of my MIDI controller. But you have your left hand down here. Wonderful. And then you've got your right hand. So you can do... So you can do proper performances with both hands. And of course, when you're recording, um, you don't pick up any... Uh, MIDI controller noise but when I'm making videos you do so excuse me for that but you have that whole like performance aspect and the samples kind of just like roll into each other and it's really, really comfortable playing it and playing it in time is no problem and it's one of those libraries where you know if, if you program and draw everything in you're absolutely fine but if you like playing the parts in it's absolutely perfect so we've got anvils and it's going to go through i'm not going to play every single articulation um but I, you know 
You got anvils, brake drum, china cymbal, crashes and stack, giant crasher, oil drum, PRT, scaffolds, small metal, spiral cymbals, splash cymbals, suspended cymbals, tam tams, temple bowls, thunder sheet, trash cans, water phone, wing gong. So, you know, right off the bat, if you're doing orchestral music, it's going to be perfect for that. It's going to be detailed. It's going to be lovely. If you're doing cinematic scoring, let's say horror or tension or suspense, this is got all like, you know, the bowed instruments and more extended articulation. So it's very, very cool. So let's go on the brake drums very, very quick. You've got poly beaters, uh, rubber mallets, and then all in one. And they're really responsive to velocity. Absolutely love it. So change articulation, you can set up key switches, you can just click on it. Beautiful. And then all in one, you can have both types of articulation if you want, so nice and easy. And you'll notice the memory footprint isn't that big, uh, which is great. Uh, we're on the China symbols, we've got felt mallets. And you can use, yeah, you can use a mod wheel to sort of bring these swells in which is very, very useful. Um, means you don't have to reverse any symbols uh, using audio, but I did do that in the composition a little bit later just to see how they come out. And I've got sticks. Yeah. I've got the choke. So good. And they got the bows. Just layering those up and then scrapes. So again, excuse my MIDI controller. Okay, but if I just play those. Yeah, it's cool stuff. Crashes and stack. And then rods and uh, dreads. So again, the two hand is really good. And I missed one. Lovely. Um, let's go to the giant crusher. The sticks. Brilliant. And it's these kinds of instruments that are, you know, you just sort of pop them in to your arrangements and it just adds, again, lots of character. And again, definition as well uh the detail is incredible and having used these in a composition um they really stick out but we're going to talk more about that in a moment oil drum so they can get a lot louder soft felt Oops. And then brushes. And hands. And then our good friend, the Super Bowl. 
Cool sounds going on there. Um, then we have the PRT personal favourite. Love the choke. Oops. expecting a roll there, I don't know why, but I'm back on the right hand side. Um, yeah, again, beautiful. So many different options, uh, which is great. Uh, scaffolds. Beautiful. And then pin hammer. Lovely stuff. Um, small metals. Now, this is like an instrument in itself, and I love uh, the instruments here. So you got go go's. There, and you got the bell tree. Personal favourite of mine, uh, the cabasa. So we need like those little shakers. They're really cool. It's more percussive. Got chain drops. Uh, cowbells, always more cowbell. Uh, then we've got the finger symbols. Love it. Uh, Guaira. About 10 years ago, I was in a studio and we really needed one of these and we couldn't find one. But now, Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion, that would have done the job. But that's 10 years ago. Now, the Mark Tree, um, yeah, I've got a very long relationship with this instrument. I use them. Um, everything I want, every time I want something a little bit like sort of fantasy like or a bit uh, magical. There it is. And I love the options and how many different sounds and performances you get with this library. So this is worth it just for this for me. Which I know is a very silly reason just for one tiny instrument, but um, I can't help it. I use it all the time. So, yeah. Um, Reco Reco. And Slay Indian Bells. Again, an instrument that I use a lot. Mm, very Christmassy. Spring Coil. Very cool. Tambourines.
So I'll be using those on my next Spaghetti Western track. Cool, there's my windows. Triangle. I do see sometimes on social media when people talk about a triangle library with um, lots of mixer options or mic options. Well, now you have it. Here's a triangle and there's uh, 16. Is it 16? Um, just double checking, 12. Da, 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 da. 16 mic signals for your triangle. So it is there. It does exist. It's here. Um, I'll talk about those a little bit later, but yeah, uh, triangles and then wind chimes. Absolutely lovely. So that is one little instrument uh, which contains lots of even smaller instruments, but small metals, brilliant. They got spiral symbol. And we've got the splash symbols. Beautiful. And suspended symbols. So a lot of symbol action going on. Uh, there we go. So tons of distant, uh, different articulations. Brushes, sticks, bows. And then all in one dark. Mellow. And bright. So a simple option for um, every mood. There we go. Tam Tams. Lovely. So that's with the mallets. They got Super Bowl. Instant um, atmosphere. Temple bowls. Sound cool. Thunder sheet, personal favorite of mine. Felt mallets. Dreads. So it really bites through. Then bows. And Super Bowl. So yeah, lots going on there. Trash cans. Dreads. And there we go. And last two, we've got water phone. Nice. And they got coal linear versions, so the wood part of the bow on the water phone. Very Bernard. Lovely. And they've got wind gong to finish off with. It's classic, I'm not gonna lie.
The release is amazing. So cool. And then Bose. So yeah, some really good stuff there. Um, and like I say, it's not just about orchestral percussion. There's plenty, you know, for sort of different types of scoring as well. Now, if I go back to the break drums, just to illustrate a couple of things. Now in the middle uh, of the large dial, you've got reverb and tightness. So if you want to play on the grid, it's set to zero. I believe if it's all the way up, that's where you're going to want it if you want to play on the grid. Um, so it just the it doesn't really adjust the sample start time, but it just means that the sort of fullness of the sample will land on the beat. They got reverb. Sounds a bit like a school bell now. But there we go. Uh, so reverb in the middle, and that is that. And then uh, if we click on the effects, you have that. And then if the instrument does as releases, you can adjust them there. But the big thing are the mixes. And I think um, sometimes I don't sort of mention these enough, but I, as a composer, I really, really tweak the mixes when I'm doing a final delivery um, or work of instruments, I'll work with them. But you've got two mixes, one and two from Simon Ray's. Um, so number one sounds lovely number two gotta bring it up excellent they got just overheads lovely and they got close mics and the close mics are really important can't turn it up because if you just want A dry signal that is why you want it and then you can add your own reverbs or impulse responses whatever you want uh close rhythm then you got the tree i'm gonna turn the ribbon off tree tree two outrigger one my old friends outrigger two oops Gotta give it time to load. Incidentally, I'm loading these off um not not a an M2, just a standard SSD, and it'll all loads lightning fast. So that's the mids. They got the ambience. I like a combination of the two. A bit of outrigger. You get that nice balance of clarity, but also um a nice little sort of ambient sheen, as it were. So there we go. I'm just going to bring those down. And vintage one. Let's call that load. Vintage two. Pop close. So dramatic change in sound. And then just the spill mics. Generally where I'd go if I was messing around with some uh, sound design. And there you go. The last thing. Um, always talk about this. It's not, not a big footprint library in a way, but let's say it was. Uh, click on the pencil and you can jettison different articulations. And um, just speaking of that, if, if you do have Colossus, because that was a big thing about the size and the footprint of the memory they've now um i say they spitfire have created a way where um is a lot smaller not just by getting rid of um the articulation so the latest update they've done if you do have classes check it out so just a little side thought there but we're talking about abbey road orchestra mount percussion now my middle thoughts having played through all the instruments are it is incredibly detailed and the sampling is impeccable I love the two-handed nature of the performances, just like the other uh, libraries in the series. And because it's been engineered by Simon Rhodes, it's incredibly coherent um, with the other libraries. And of course, the performances from JB are 
incredible. So, all is good as far as I'm concerned. I think it's great. It is a little bit quiet, um, so I've had to crank it up. But again, I've mentioned that's just for the video. But percussion libraries, they that their justice is done, as it were, when they're put into compositions or performances. Because at the moment, I sort of played the keys and clattered some metals. Um, and, you know, what metals they are, they sound great. But it's all about the composition. So what we're going to do now is jump straight over to that composition and just check out what the sounds are. And I've used the entire Abbey Road Orchestra uh, percussion but I've focused on the metal percussion. And I decided to go for some sort of like heroic themes. I did a major one, a minor one, both in D, obviously. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. For the composition, I focus on the Abbey Road Orchestra percussion, and I really wanted to show how it all works together. On the left-hand side, you can see we have seven metal percussion tracks. That is obviously the focus of the video. And then we've got the Abbey Road Orchestra high snares, and we've got the low basses, epic toms, and taiko booms. And I created the boom myself using um, an EQ. Not massively exciting, but I will just play it. So a bit of a sub. And then I use my all-time favourite timpani rolls uh, from the Hans Zimmer Pro library. I do love them. So, a bit further up, we have um, some Abbey Road 1 Sparkly Woods and the Ledgery Low Strings. Then I'm using the uh, Siphony, which is supposed to be Symphony Horns from the Symphony Breast. And Hans Zimmer violins that is going to bother me i'm not going to lie there we go um hans zimmer sorry hans not hams hans zimmer violins and the hans zimmer violins harmonics as well and then um use a choir lovely split into men and women and then the ostinato tracks which um yeah, that they're great. They just do what they say they will. Now, how does it start? Um, it actually starts here with a reverse symbol, and here it is. Okay, so the reverse symbol. Um, you actually don't get these in the library, so I just played a hanging symbol and then reverse the audio and faded it in and couple that up with a timpani roll as well beautiful so we get that nice big intro lovely if I was played just the percussion part I originally wanted to do something a little bit Christmassy, uh, which is why I use these metal Indian bells. That is instant Christmas. And if I just solo off the, um, the metals, 
just so you can see exactly what the sort of focus library is doing. So it's sort of crushing all over the place, and I absolutely love um, the small metals. So again, if I just show those, and um, there we go. So we're on the mark. Uh, just, yeah, they sound great. I do use those a lot in my composing, and um, yeah, they sound brilliant. So the, the whole essence of the library is talking about detail, but when you start combining all three parts of the percussion, and I'm going to put my timpani rolls in. Yeah, for me, that is some of the cleanest percussion on the market right now. Um, the attention to detail is just there, and I've done all of this completely out of the box. Um, I haven't really tweaked with any settings or additional microphone settings, and I just think it is absolutely brill. Um, I have like panned, obviously, myself, but the, the idea about the whole Abbey Road Orchestra series is that it's very high detail, and lots of different options to create the sound you want but it's when you actually start hearing it in a mix um in a full arrangement you just really sort of appreciate how it feels and the realism uh that's going on so yeah it is a high value library and when you combine all three um you know it's it's a, a serious chunk of change as you'd say but the trade-off is you're getting this amazingly detailed and beautiful but also very very functional um sort of percussion library to use and percussion has always been something that um, i've got my favorites my go-to's but i've never actually had a whole percussion ensemble i kind of just like picked from uh different um sort of libraries and the sort of percussion patches they had so having this is you know it is absolutely incredible. And I I don't actually own the original J.B. Burgess percussion. Um, I, I've spoken to Spitfire on several occasions about how much I really want it, but do I need it? And I can safely say, using Abbey Road Orchestra, um, it's really the only percussion that you're going to need. And I'm hoping that Spitfire obviously um, follow this up with tuned percussion. So... Yes, we shall see about that. Anyway, moving on with the composition. So, um, this is why I love Abbey Road 1. Because if I just solo off just the melody parts... So that's the low strings and sparkling words. I love these sparkling words. Just instant magic. And because I thought I was going for Christmas, I thought it was quite a good one to pick. And then my old faithful, um, I use the brass library on everything. And then the Hans Zimmer violins. Yeah, 
It is legato. There's a little dodgy bit of writing there. Um, I'll do the harmonics later. But when you sort of combine that, you just have a really um, thick kind of melody. And yes, I, I just realised I need to give my performers time to breathe. Um, but hey, you know, we're on a computer. It's all good. So if I play that along with the ostinatos, and the ostinatos actually are doing quite a lot. I've got woods, I've got strings. Um, obviously no percussion, all the percussions from um, Abbey Road Orchestra and Hans Zimmer. So when you're composing against the clock, because obviously we don't have a huge amount of time to create these compositions, um, I love just using ostinato instruments. So I won't say which ones they are, but they, they are very, very cool. So there we go. And then you just play it all together. Really simple chord progressions, a nice sort of driving uh, melody, but of course we have the percussion that, you know, kind of a lot of fun just working with, and it didn't take a huge amount of time to sort of put, put this in place. Um, so we end this section and then keep the ostinato going. I've got the thunder sheet. And it's kind of a um, development of the first melody, so that's in D major. Decide to write in D minor here. Um, I do like a bit of D minor, I'm not gonna lie. And uh, introduce the choir, and in my haste, um, my classic, uh, I'll play the, the male choir first and then the female choir, and bring the female choir in later. Um, it's a copy and paste situation. Um, I did adjust, so playing in octaves. Um, but totally forgot to remove the MIDI that I wasn't using. But you get the idea. And added the Hans Zimmer violin harmonics. Nice and straightforward. Um, they just hold a D all the way through. I actually go up an octave. Um, just sounds like pretty cool. It's a kind of little touch. If they weren't there, you'd actually notice they're missing. Um, but if they are there, then they sort of like just blend in. But there we go. Um, it's really quite straightforward. I, I just added more symbols. I love... Um, so you've got the PRT, uh, splash symbols, and suspended symbols going at the same time. So all the symbol action is uh, great. And again, you can just hear these really stand out from the crowd. So in the mix, they're really, really epic. And then I've rhapsodized about the high snares. 
um, and the piccolo stairs from the um, high percussion. And then um, we do, I need to reverse once, whoops, going all over the place. Um, yeah, I did the Indian bells again later um, because they are, um, again, it's instant Christmas, which I always keep going on about, uh, but they seem to fit to this sort of, like heroic way. <laughs> it's really cool just having something constantly going there are tambourines i tried uh, a couple of other things so yeah works very, very well so yeah um really straightforward composition but you can just see how everything works together and i've done all the midi completely on the grid as well normally i'd be slightly off and humanize it and use the old uh, uh soft quantize but i haven't today um just want to put everything on the grid there is negative delay going on on the instrument tracks as well just through using them for as long as i have done i can work out an approximate sort of one so they're locked in with the ostinato but yeah um just really good fun composition <laughs> Lovely. And there we go. Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion. What do I think about it? Well, it's kind of the missing piece from the Abbey Road High and the Abbey Road Low. And I've got to admit, this percussion library is great. You know, like the, the entire combination. So if I'm playing um, just the last section, sorry, there's my uh, Windows taskbar or whatever it is. I mean, it sounds like the ensembles right there, the round robins of velocity layers. I mean, going into it, yes, I've paid attention to different velocities and accenting beats, um, which is really, really important. But yeah, it's just kind of all there for you and out of the box. What are my final thoughts about Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion? Well, do I recommend it? Yes, of course I do. And we've seen now, as three volumes of percussion have come out, you've got the same team creating these libraries to this incredibly high standard. So you have, obviously, J.B. Burgess and his amazing performances, Simon Rhodes with the engineering aspect and just capturing the beauty of these performances, and, of course, the Abbey Road 1 um, performing space, as it were. They just, they're so coherent and they are so vast in terms of content. And I'll, I'll talk about the round robins, velocity layers, you've got all the different mic mixes. It really is becoming a powerhouse library already. And it does sort of bring itself to the elephant in the room, as it were, because yes, it, it is starting to get really, really big and there is a cost aspect to that but i've always said you get what you pay for this is the reason why i bought in one go the entire symphony orchestra that was a lot of money um even in the sales but it was so worth it because like i say you get what you pay for that completely transformed my sound um and i think the abbey road orchestra is going to do something very very similar and very very revolutionary when it comes to modern scoring so yeah if you can go for it really really do if you need it for your work for your um like compositions if you do customs especially this is going to set the bar really really high and yeah um it, it's incredibly detailed orchestral percussion so you know if you need it um i think as a product it is an incredible achievement and i really cannot wait to see what spitfire audio come up with next
all that leads me to say is thank you so much to Spitfire Audio for sending a copy of Abbey Road Orchestra Metal Percussion this way so I could have made this video and I had a lot of fun working with the library and obviously combining with the other Abbey Road Orchestra libraries and I keep saying it really can't wait to see what's coming next if you're not done so already please subscribe to our channel and feel free to leave comments and likes galore and anything you want what what do you think about this instrument or uh how would you use it what are the strengths and maybe anything you might like to see done better who knows and then please check out our other videos on the samplist and then head over to the samplist.com see what's going on in the world of virtual instruments until next time thank you so much for checking out this video and keep on making that music and we will speak again soon